that's somebody in Hadley this afternoon, like a copy of God's written word, offered to you quite freely. God's own record is testimony concerning his only son sent into the world and the love of God sent to uh, be a saviour deliver us from our sin from our worst enemy the enemy within to uh, gave his son up to the death of the cross so that through him that we might be saved these things were written the bible tells us that in believing in jesus christ that you might have life in his name I'd like to have a copy of god's word offered to you quite freely no cost no obligation to you take read meditate on the person of Jesus, the love of Jesus Amen. for even for handling sinner. sinners here this afternoon. Amen. That you might be forgiven, that you might know your maker, that you might know his son whom he said, This is eternal life. You know God and know the one who he has sent into the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish in their sin that is but have eternal life you'd like to have a copy of god's word it's offered to you quite freely no cost no obligation to you you're simply for the taking one of god for you here and this afternoon taken from the book of psalms i hate those who pay regard to worthless idols well paying regard to a worthless idol that would be uh, very sensible would it and yet many many people in the world today do trust in worthless idols what is an idol? An idol is anything or anyone that you put your trust in that's worthless, that's of no avail to you, no value to you, doesn't do you any good, doesn't do anything for you, doesn't save you, doesn't give you life, doesn't give you forgiveness, doesn't bring you to God doesn't reconcile you to God. The human heart is an idol factory. Some, of course, manufacture idols of their own. Some, uh, they make an idol out of themselves. They trust in self. They trust in their own intellectual powers. They trust in man-made philosophies like Darwin's nonsense about evolution. Some trust in scientism. Some trust in, uh, well, they trust in the false religions of this world. Idolatry, idols, worthless idols that do you no good whatsoever. To trust in yourself, trust in what you can do, when God tells us that nobody but nobody shall ever be reconciled to him, know his forgiveness, know his love, know his grace, know his kindness, know eternal life, no one shall ever know the blessings of God by their own doing. And yet men and women have this fanciful knowledge, this fanciful uh, notion that paying regard to an idol, the idol of self, 
their own doing. Some perceive the imaginary goodness of their own that somehow they'll get some brownie points, they'll get acceptance with God. The trouble is that you're doing good is fanciful, is a notion, is an idol even, a worthless idol, because it's not existent. There's none good, says God, and there's none who does good. No, not your goodness, only the goodness of God, the true and living God, not a worthless idol, the God who made heaven and earth and all things in it, and the God who requires of you that you hear him, that you trust him, that you trust in his record concerning his son sent into the world that you him that you might have life that which a worthless idol cannot give you neither worthless idolatrous religion it's a living god it's a living savior that you need not a worthless idol what can the idolatry of the habits religion do for you. He, its founder, Mohammed, is dead and buried, and his body lies a molding in the grave, just like old John Brown. He can't do it. He can't give you light. He can't bring forgiveness to you. The authority to forgive anyone their sins lies, the Bible says, with the Son of Man, the Son of God. It's a living Savior that you need, the one who conquered sin and death and hell, the one who overcame by the shedding of his blood on that cross. No forgiveness, no remission of sin without the shedding of blood in his lamb you have. No forgiveness. You have no blood sacrifice there. So therefore, you would still be in your sin. Worthless idolatry, I say to you. I hate these sins. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols. Yourself, imaginary, imaginary power in yourself to save, to redeem yourself by your own powers. No, no, my friends, the idols of this world, of this age, are many, many. An idol manufactured by man, by his own mind, his own thinking, or produced by his own hand. Roman Catholic religion, just the same. The habit never died for sinners. Jesus did, the ever-living Savior. No Pope of Rome ever died for a sinner. Jesus did. The habit, Popes of Rome, they never re rose again from the dead. They haven't conquered sin and death and hell. Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, have these sinners. God loves you. Christ died for your sins. Question is what? Will you do about it? Will you put your trust? Will you turn from the worthless idol and put your trust in the ever-living Savior, the one who's alive from the dead and lives forevermore? Jesus Christ, crucified, dead, buried, and raised again from the dead, a living Savior, able to bring to you what your worthless idols can do for you. Your materialism, your money, your home, whatever it is that you turn into an idol and put your trust in. Turn today, repent, says the Savior. The psalmist, he says, no, I hate. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. That's the wise thing to do. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the liars, the lying, idolatrous religions tell you he did not die. History itself demonstrates a proven historical event 2,000 years ago. Son of God died on a cross, died for Hanley sinners, died for those who repent and put their trust, their confidence in him, their full-blown confidence, that is, confiding in, putting your trust not on a worthless idol, not idolatrous religion, but putting your trust in a savior, one who has done something for you, and one who has a track record of saving many, many millions of people down through the ages, these last 2,000 years. Sinners of all kinds and stripes, the worst and the best of them, have turned to Jesus and found salvation. Do the Bible says, do what the Bible, do what Jesus tells you to do, and you will have the proof. Don't come and ask me to prove to you that God is. You already know that, that God is. The invisible things of God are clearly seen. You are without excuse. The Bible does not seek to prove that God is. Simply do that which God requires of you, that which he commands you, that which he teaches in his word. Do, 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 and you will see, you will have the evidence, not only that God is, but that Jesus Christ is a worthy Savior, worthy of your trust, worthy of your faith, worthy of your confidence, not like worthless idols. A worthless idol cannot take your sins away, cannot break the power of your sinful addictions, cannot deliver you from your drug addiction, your addiction to pornography, your addiction to immorality, all the addictions that are about in Hanley today, sinful addictions that destroy, take the life out of men and women. Idolatry kills. Idolatry robs you of life. Only Jesus, only the one who is the way, the truth and the life, the one who is the resurrection and the life, only he can give you life. There's no life apart from God in Jesus Christ. Only an earthly existence for a short space of time. And then you leave your last and you go out of this world and stand before God in judgment. So now is the time. Now today, Hanley, this day, says God, a day of grace, a day of life being offered to you, life from the dead, that which a worthless idol cannot give to you. A living Savior, alive and alive forevermore. And able, able, I tell you, to raise you out of your tombs of unbelief, out of your idolatry, out of that which you trust in, other than the true and living God. Who so loved the world, a world of sinners. Who so loved Hanley sinners. Who so loved the world that he gave his only son and gave him up to the death of the cross to endure, to endure that suffering, that pain, that anguish to take away the sin, the shame, the guilt, the blame, the curse of God 
the wrath of God that lies upon you now to take it away in the love of God and in the love of Christ. Nothing to you that pass by that God should so love you. Send his son into the world to die on a cross to take your shame, your blame, to take your sin, to take your guilt and give you in its place to give you life eternal, everlasting, to give you forgiveness and the assurance of eternal life. Trusting, trusting that it, not being religious, trusting you don't do anything, trusting you just rely upon, you just rest in, you rest in another person, not yourself. You rest in a person, not a worthless idol, and you trust you trust, you rely upon what that person has done. Jesus, the Son of God, mighty, yet even in these last days, in the midst of the terrible wickedness and evil that abounds in your society today, broken, broken, but Jesus, yet able, I tell you, to save to the uttermost, all who turn from their worthless idols and turn to him, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in him. Today, hand thy sinners and get life, forgiveness, eternal life in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, whom I declare to you today. Repent and believe the gospel, says Jesus. That's the way forward. Repent and believe the gospel, the truth of the gospel, that Christ died for sinners, that he died for the ungodly, the unrighteous, the unholy. Sinners he came for. Oh, you say, I'm not a sinner. Well, then you call God a liar. Oh, sin that comes short of the glory of God, not righteous, no, not one, not who does good, not who is able to do any good, no goodness in us. The goodness is in God, God, who so loved the world that he gave his only son out of the mere pleasure, not out of any compulsion on God's part, no pressure on God, to do anything to lift one single finger to help you, holy sinners. But out of his mere good pleasure, his heart of love, he so loved the world, a world of sinners, even holy sinners, that he gave his son, his only son, his very best, gave him up for this world, gave him up to the death of the cross. And then, with mighty power, not the power of a worthless idol, there's no power there, but by the power of God, raised him from the dead, and by token of that, God has given notice to the world of sinners that he intends to judge the world in righteousness by Jesus, whom he has raised from the dead. So I warn you to flee, flee from that judgment coming soon. Flee from the wrath of God revealed from heaven against all the unrighteousness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness. Turn from your worthless idol whatever it is that you're trusting in today, and turn, turn to you, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We have God's testimony, God's record. You're warrant, you're warrant to believe 
your justification to believe in Jesus Christ today. God's testimony, his record, the gospel that he has given to us, the token, the measure, the immensity of his love in giving his only son and setting him before you, offering his son to you in order, in order that you might have life that you might live in the presence of God, that you might have a knowledge of God, a saving knowledge of God in His Son, Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. No other Savior, Henry. No other Savior. No other mediator. No other who can bring you back to God. No other who can bring life to your dead soul. No other who can give you the hope of eternal life. Days coming shortly for some of you, shorter than others, when you'll breathe your last and go out of this world. Close your eyes in death, and the next person that you see, that you behold, the Son of God, the judge of all the earth. Before that day comes, even today, even today, Hanley sinners, turn from your worthless idols, turn from all and everything and everyone that you're trusting in today and put your trust firmly, firmly in the person of God's Son, Jesus, sent, sent to die, sent to give light, sent to bring the love, the inestimable love of God to your soul. Trust in the Lord. That's but wise men still do. The Sabbath, he goes on to say, I will rejoice and be glad in your, in your steadfast love. The steadfast love of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that love, it's the love of Christ that brings us here into your midst this afternoon. It's the love of Christ that brings us here Friday by Friday to lift up our voices and make the love of Christ known to you. The love of Christ, past knowledge, beyond comprehension, beyond explanation. For the last 2,000 years, men have been striving to explain the love of Christ to sinners. None, none has ever yet succeeded. The love of Christ, it has to be tasted. It has to be experienced. And I tell you, there's no love. It's a steadfast love. Steadfast, immovable, immovable. Once his love is in your soul, once his love in your heart, never, never to be removed. Love with everlasting love. A love, a love that passes anything, any human relationship. Love, love that the world talks about, but can't explain, can't define, can't tell you what it is tell you to do it, say we must do it, but never get round to doing it. Well, God did get round to loving the world. He so loved the world, he gave his only son. God actually got round to doing something in his love. Doing what the world cannot do, what the world knows nothing about. The steadfast love of Jesus. Herein is the love of God that he gave his only son and gave him up to the death of the cross.
to shed his blood so that you can be forgiven, reconciled to God, so that you could know your maker savingly. Man's greatest need, I tell you, to know his maker and to know his maker's love. Only Jesus can bring that to you. Look where you will, the world over. You look up, you look down, you look around you. Here, I ask you, do you see the love of God in all of God's creation? Nowhere. Turn the world upside down and all you see is nothing but the displeasure and the anger of God because of man's sin. So where do you go? Where's the one and only place that you go in order to be whole, to see the love of God? And it's extreme. The cross where Jesus bled and died. Here is the love of God that God gave his only son. I tell you for the worst of you, I care not, I care not where you've been. I care not what you've been doing, how many your sins are, how disgusting they might be, murder, drugs, mayhem, whatever it is. There is no sin deeper than the grace of God in Jesus Christ. This is the love of God that he gave his son for sinners, for the worst, for the worst. Read God's word for yourself and see the record, see the testimony of sinners, men who opposed God, who blasphemed him, men who were violent, adulterous, homosexual, drunkards, all kinds, all stripes of sinners. But they were washed. They were washed. They were made clean. How? Their sin was taken away, how you say, by Jesus, whom I proclaim to you this afternoon. His blood shed on that cross, the love of Christ. I tell you, one drop, one drop out of the ocean, the mighty reservoir of God's love, one drop of the love of Christ in your heart, and I tell you, it will change you radically, and it will change you forever. And you yourself will become a lover. You yourself will love everything that moves and breathes and has being. But more importantly, you'll love your maker, you'll love God, and you'll love Jesus Christ with all your heart. The steadfast love, I rejoice. No wonder he rejoices. I rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because there's nothing like the love of Christ to bring joy to the heart. Not the happiness of the world. That doesn't last for five minutes. That's God when the booze is gone, the drugs of God, the material thing that you coveted wears off. Oh, joy, inexpressible and full of glory, says Jesus. A joy that I will give to you that nobody and nothing can take away from you. They can persecute you. They can mock you and sneer at you. They can put you in a dungeon. They can even take your life from you, but they can't take the joy that the steadfast love of Christ brings to the soul of a man, a woman, do you know? Hardly joy and come, says Jesus, that they might have life. Love and life and lasting joy. Son, not in worthless idols, not in idolatrous religion, not in religions manufactured by men, but God's religion. John chapter 3, verse 16. Check it out. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This is the love of God. Dying, dying for those who have opposed him, blasphemed his name, cursed him to his face, violated their fellow man. The love of God. Hanley sinners, there's love for you. Hanley sinners, there's forgiveness for you. Everlasting life, love, and joy inexpressible, but all found in Jesus, in no other. The living, the ever living Lord Jesus Christ. And you, he goes on to say, because you have seen my affliction and you have known the distress of my soul and delivered me, delivered me from the, the hand of my enemy, the greatest enemy of them all, our own simple hearts, our unbelieving hearts, wicked hearts of unbelief. That alone itself is enough to bring us to judgment in that day when God judges all men by his son, Jesus Christ. Supposing for a moment that you had never thought, never spoken, never done anything, anything that was contrary to God, just simply an evil heart of unbelief. Is enough, is enough to cast you into hell forever. But it's out of that evil heart of unbelief. That's where all the other stuff comes from. That's where the world, worthless idols come from. That's where the idolatrous religion comes from. That's where the, the sexual immorality comes from. That's where the drunkenness comes from. That's where the drug abuse comes from. That's where the pornography comes from. Out of evil hearts of unbelief, the suppose in their insanity that there is no God, who suppress the knowledge of God given to them, and look at the fanciful, insane, I tell you, insane notion that there is no God. And yet still knowing that you're a morally accountable creature with a conscience in you that testifies when you do right and when you do wrong. That conscience is God's agent put inside you by your creator and testifies to the fact that you're accountable and accountable to God, the one who made you, and the one who gave you that conscience. You want a good conscience? You want a clear conscience? You want a conscience that's devoid of any offense whatsoever? You want a conscience by which you can stand before God in judgment without fear, without shame, without blame? There's only one person can give you that. Jesus who died on the cross, who shed his blood, that your conscience might be sprinkled with his blood. Washed and made clean. The sin belt was taken away. The guilt, the guilt, the burden of guilt removed. Oh, I tell you, a good conscience a clear conscience before God. I tell you, it's a wonderful thing. The peace of God. The peace of God that passes all, all understanding. To be able to lay your head down in the pillow of the night time and know that all is well between you and your maker. To know to know that even were you to depart this world in the night, you would awaken 
in the arms of Jesus, a forgiven and a blood-bought sinner. Jesus came. Jesus came to relieve you of the guilt and the shame. He came to relieve you of the sin that causes the shame, the blame, the guilt. He came to die on that cross. The love of Christ. The love of Christ is beyond explanation, Hadley. It's beyond explanation. The love, the love of Christ. And it constrains us to come to you and keep coming to you we will as long as we have breath in our body to tell you of the love of Christ that you might not just know about it but that you might be brought to an experience of it to experience the love of Christ I tell you there's nothing better in all this world in all God's creation, in all God's world, nothing, nothing to compare with the love of Christ. Be assured, Hanley sinners, be assured this afternoon, God loves you. Christ died for your sins, rose again from the dead, and the gospel of his love is declared to you here this afternoon and is your justification, is your warrant to believe, to trust in the Lord, to trust in Jesus, to confide in him and to know his love, his forgiveness, to know eternal life, to know the assurance that when you breathe your last, you awaken in the arms of Jesus. I leave you. I leave you with this question, Hanley Sinners. Were you to die tonight? For God to remove you from his world tonight? God caused you to stop breathing tonight. Where? Where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? It will either be in heaven or in hell. There are only two destinations for sinners of this world. I hope my prayer for you, heavenly sinners, is that God will give you ears to hear. I tell you the facts. I tell you God loves you. I tell you Christ died for you. What are you going to do about it? Something is required of you. Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel. That's what's required of you. That you might be saved. That you might experience the wonderful wonderful, exquisite love of Christ Jesus who died for sinners. So repent, Hanley. Repent, repent, repent and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand and that's the only way you can enter God's kingdom of love. Repenting and believing the gospel. You'd like to have a copy of God's work, his written work. It's offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. You'd like a copy of God's work. Meditate upon the Son of God and upon his love for a sinner like you, like a copy of God's work, you come and ask for what? Freely offered. You like a copy of God's work, you come and ask for what? May God bless you, Hanley. Bless you, I say, and have mercy 
upon your precious, precious, never dying soul.